Hey guys, I'd like to tell you a little bit about verification bias, and I'd like to do so in the context of a rare but devastating disease, Anthony Weiner syndrome, or AWS. Anthony Weiner syndrome typically affects men in their 40s and 50s. Symptoms include poor decision making, a tendency to make the same mistakes over and over again, and a compulsion to text people pictures of one's genitals. The gold standard for the diagnosis of AWS is frontal lobe biopsy, which shows a specific pattern of atrophy in the areas of the brain controlling inhibition. Unfortunately, this is an invasive test, though it is 100% sensitive and 100% specific. Alternatively, some have proposed psychometric testing. Unfortunately, psychometric testing is only 90% sensitive and 90% specific and takes several hours to perform. More recently, discovery has been made of a protein termed GR1825 or the Geraldo Rivera protein. This has shown some promise as a possible screening test for AWS that is both non-invasive and has a quick turnaround time. We're going to look at a couple of example studies testing protein GR1825 in the diagnosis of Anthony Weiner syndrome. Since this is an example, we're going to be omniscient and we know that both the sensitivity and specificity of protein GR1825 for AWS are 80%. Therefore, if we do a case control trial of 100 patients with Anthony Weiner syndrome and 100 patients without Anthony Weiner syndrome, our 2 by 2 table should look something like this. Patients who are GR positive are felt to be high risk by the clinicians and all undergo frontal lobe biopsy as a confirmatory test. Since frontal lobe biopsy is 100% sensitive and specific, it will confirm AWS in the 80 patients with the disease and will be negative for AWS in the 20 patients without the disease. Our top row will therefore remain unchanged. Patients who are GR negative, however, were felt to be lower risk for AWS and therefore underwent less invasive psychometric testing as a confirmatory test. Now, psychometric testing, as we said, is 90% sensitive and 90% specific. Therefore, of the 20 patients with AWS who are GR protein negative who undergo psychometric testing, 18 will be found to be positive for AWS, while 2 will be incorrectly identified as negative for AWS. Of the 80 patients who are found to be GR negative and AWS negative, 72 will be identified as negative by psychometric testing, while 8 will be falsely identified as positive by psychometric testing. When we add these numbers up, our 2 by 2 table instead looks like this. Our calculated sensitivity and specificity based on this study will be 75% and 79% respectively. So we see a decrease in both the sensitivity and specificity due to differential verification bias, also known as double gold standard bias. This occurs when multiple gold standards are used to verify the results of the test of interest. Often a more invasive and more accurate test is reserved for those in whom the diagnostic test being studied is positive. A less invasive and less accurate test is often used in those patients in whom the diagnostic test is negative. It tends to result in underestimates of both sensitivity and specificity as seen in our example. I know this can be hard to swallow and you're probably thinking, man, am I in trouble. Let's look at another example study. Again, we know that the sensitivity and specificity of our protein is 80%. And again, our 2x2 two two table should look like this. This time, we're going to assume that psychometric testing has not yet been developed as a confirmatory test for Anthony Weiner syndrome. Therefore, the only confirmatory test is the true gold standard frontal lobe biopsy. All patients who are GR positive undergo confirmatory testing with frontal lobe biopsy. So again, our top row will remain unchanged as in the last example. This time, patients who are GR negative and therefore felt to have a lower risk of Anthony Weiner syndrome are less likely to receive the gold standard as it is invasive. Of the 20 patients who are GR negative and AWS positive, only half or 10 undergo biopsy. All 10 biopsies are positive. Of the 80 patients who are GR negative and Anthony Weiner syndrome negative, half or 40 undergo biopsy and all biopsies are negative. In this case, the authors only want to include patients who have undergone the gold standard and whose AWS status has been confirmed. Therefore, our 2x2 two two table will end up looking like this. 
and our sensitivity and specificity will be 89% and 67% respectively. Here we see that the sensitivity is overestimated and the specificity is highly underestimated. This is an example of partial verification bias, which occurs when not all study subjects who receive the diagnostic test being studied receive the gold standard, but only those who get the gold standard are included in the study results. As with differential verification bias, this often occurs because the gold standard is invasive or potentially harmful. Again, those patients with a positive test will be more likely to receive the gold standard than those with a negative test. Partial verification bias tends to result in a modest overestimate of the sensitivity and a marked underestimate of specificity, as we saw. Now I know this seems a little bit complicated, but if verification bias just makes you so mad, try and just relax a little and try and remember the important thing, which is that any time that the results of the study being tested affect the decision to perform the gold standard, you run the risk of influencing or biasing the reported sensitivity and specificity. Well, that's all I have. Thanks for listening in, and don't forget, nobody likes a wiener.